RAG or Retrieval Augmented Generation has become a foundation for modern AI applications. But most teams still treat it like a black box, assuming it will just work. The result? Slow iteration, high cost, and of course, inconsistent results. Now, Rapid Fire AI wants to change that with its new open source framework, Rapid Fire AI RAG, which brings real time experimentation and automation to the RAG workflow. And to discuss this launch and announcement, we have with us Arun Kumar, CTO and co founder of Rapid Fire AI. Mm -hmm. Arun, for those who may not be familiar with Rapid Fire AI, can you please talk a bit about the company and what? core problem you are solving in today's AI landscape? We are Rapid Fire AI. We are a software startup that helps make LLM customization for AI applications much easier, faster, and cheaper. The product addresses a pressing need. Open models such as Llama, Mistral have become very powerful. Even closed model APIs such as OpenAI have become very powerful, but they don't understand your specific task data, your specific task eval metrics. There's a big gap between their capability and what you need for your use case. We are aiming to bridge that gap with a software system that makes it much easier and faster to customize LLMs and the models on their pipelines like RAG for your use case on your data, on your infra. You've just launched Rapid Fire AI RAG. It's an open source extension of your hyper parallel experimentation framework. Can you talk about what your offerings look like and what makes this launch such a big deal for teams building RAG and agentic AI applications? We currently have a product already out in the open source world for fine tuning and post training, where we provide what we call hyper parallel comparisons. So like imagine you're an AI developer that has very limited resources, like maybe just four GPUs. Today, if you were to run these for tuning a Llama model, you would have to run them on all GPUs with one set of configurations for like adapters, for like hyperparameters and prompt schemes. Exploring more is extremely expensive and tedious and slow. But with our hyper parallel execution engine, you can launch even 16 configuration variations simultaneously, and you will see their results simultaneously. And this allows you to get a much better comparative experience of what works and what doesn't. And you can dynamically control them in flight, which is not a capability you get any any other system. In Rapid Fire AI RAG, we are bringing that power of hyper parallel exploration and dynamic control and automatic system execution to agentic RAG workflows and context engineering workflows. Now, why does it matter for RAG and context engineering? There are a lot of knobs to set for RAG workflows also. Data chunking, embedding, retrieval, re-ranking, all of this affects how good your pipeline is. If you don't set these knobs correctly, you will not get good results. And I think that is one of the key reasons why a lot of RAG prototypes are not going to production. They don't meet the eval metrics because people are not systematically comparing values for these knobs and experimenting with it. That is what we aim to change with Rapid Fire AI RAG. We are doing this open source release and you'd be able to run this on your own infra. Now, the fact is that many teams believe that RAG performance simply depends on how well data is chunked and indexed. Why is this assumption flawed and how does your approach at Rapid Fire AI RAG help correct it? One of the things to remember with the promptable language models is you don't get to control the models in the RAG pipelines. You The model is frozen or even hidden behind a closed model API. What you can control is what the model sees. That whole process is called context engineering now. So it's a combination of how you instruct the model, what context you give it in terms of retrieved uh, information, maybe some tool use, that sort of thing. Uh, so it's very critical to give it the right context for it to be able to process the data correctly. And that is the first step. So now, how do I control what the model sees? This is where chunking, embedding, retrieval, all of that comes into play. Retrieving the most relevant context for the particular user query that has been posed. Now, people, when they chunk it, they think they can just do one form of chunking and be done with it, but it's very specific to the query and the use case. In some cases, chunking the documents at paragraph level might work, but in some cases it may not. You might split the context across chunks, in which case the retrieval will not help you. If you chunk it at a sentence level, you might dilute the context too much. If you chunk it at a document page level, then you might spend a lot more tokens on the context and you will be incurring a huge amount of costs. So on top of that, if you don't chunk at all, if you dump the whole corpus, there is this lost in the middle problem. The model will get confused because it's not able to find the relevant information in this giant 
context that you've given to it. So this is analogous to what we call the bias variance trade-off in the learning world. Here, the model is doing what we call in-context learning. That is a technical term that the ML people use. And so to be able to make sure that the model is producing optimal results, you need to optimize what is given to the model. That is the starting point for why we need to optimize how you chunk the data, how you embed it, how you retrieve it, how you re-rank it. Um, often queries that are posed in an application are often diverse. It's not necessary that one retrieval and re-ranking scheme that works for one query might work for other set of use cases and other set of queries. There is no one size that fits all. There is no universal indexing and retrieval scheme. There is no universal re-ranking scheme. You have to figure out what works for your use case with the eval metrics for your use case. That is a process of customization that Rapid Fire AI RAG really turbocharges. As I was going through the announcement, one of the most exciting parts of this release is dynamic experiment control and automation. Can you walk us through how that works and how it helps team move faster without sacrificing accuracy and resource efficiency? Certainly. Yeah, I think that's one of the exciting parts about Rapid Fire AI. The execution engine that we have built, so there are a lot of dashboards out there for experimentation, like weights and biases, memo flow, and so on. But they are sort of, they, they're passive. They let you visualize what you're running. Here in Rapid Fire AI, it's an interactive system where from the dashboard or from the notebook, you can control the runs in flight. So if I've launched like 16 configs, even on a 4 GPU machine, I can now compare them. And based on that, I can say, okay, 90% of them are not productive. I can stop them in flight, even though they've seen only like 25% or 30% of the data. I don't need to wait for the entire pass over the data to finish on my eval set. If I'm doing like closed model APIs, this can help you dramatically reduce your token spend because you're not wasting money on dead ends. If you're running it on your own in-house GPUs with open models, you're saving a lot of GPU costs and GPU time, especially if you're on pay as you go clouds. Uh, so that is with stopping. Increasingly, people also want to adapt the configurations that they have based on what they've seen before. And in the ML world, this is there's like what we call automated ML heuristics that allow you to derive new configurations based on the results of past configurations. We are seeing similar things in the RAG pipeline space as well. Most recently, there was this algorithm JEPA released by Databricks that is adaptively changing the prompts. There's also adaptive context engineering paper from Stanford. Uh, Data Robot has the Sifter algorithm, which is a Bayesian optimization algorithm. These sorts of algorithms allow you to inherit from a config that has worked based on the data you've seen and create variations. We have generalized that concept to support what we call clone modify operations. Let's say I've launched these 16 configurations. I've pruned it down. 12 of them are not good. Now I have four. The top two, I'd like to clone and modify and change the re-ranking scheme that I've done in flight and then inject four more variations in flight. That is something that Rapid Fire AI allows you to do. And so if I want to change the chunking scheme, maybe the eval metrics are not improving when I'm doing the processing, so now I'd like to chunk it differently. I can inject those variations in flight. Under the hood, Rapid Fire AI automatically apportions resources across all live configs. You do not need as a user to manually figure out what to place on what resources. How do I set up separate processes, separate clusters? It's a huge chore today to do this manually. With Rapid Fire AI, the backend complexity is automated, regardless of whether you're running GPUs and self-hosted LLMs or API calls to OpenAI where we have to apportion rate limiting of the tokens and the token spend and so on. Rapid Fire AI RAG allows users to run multiple variations of retrieval, chunking, and prompting in parallel, even on a single machine. What kind of performance or productivity improvements have you seen from this hyper parallel model in real world testing? Of course, it's just announced, but you have been working with partners. A lot of testing was going on, so talk about it. The product is going to be released, so everybody, it's released in the open source, so you can try it out on your own and see for yourself on your data. That is the best benchmark, right? How does it work on your use case compared to what you have today? But we have done our own benchmarks internally as well. It amplifies what we call experimentation throughput. That is the crux of what number of config combinations am I ex able to explore per unit time? And we have shown results that it can increase it by even 16 to 24x. And so what this means is now I can compare a lot more variations with the same resources. In the ML world, that means you can get much better eval metrics. Alternatively, if I know what combinations I want to explore, I can reduce the time that I'm spending. So in the AI application context, there's always this Pareto surface of three dimensions at least, eval metrics, uh, inference latency, total cost of ownership, 
we are pushing the Pareto Frontier to give more options to AI developers that is right-sized for their application. But uh, yeah, I think the best thing is go and tie, pip install RapidFire AI, run it on your own use case. You will see the benefits for yourself. When I was listening to you, I noticed that open source, openness, and interoperability seems to be central to your philosophy, especially with support for both self-hosted and closed model integration. Why was that important? And how do you see this shaping the future of enterprise AI experimentation? Yeah, that's a great question. So um, I know you must have seen from my bio, I'm also a professor at the University of California, San Diego in computer science and data science. And in academia, we love open source. We love open models. We love open source software and so on. But in the industrial world, there are always other trade-offs. There's a gap between open source products and proprietary products. Companies at the end of the day have to have a business. They need to be able to make a profit to be sustaining themselves. A lot of open source projects do suffer because of lack of commitment on the monetary side. Developers cannot devote their entire time to just do them doing that. So I understand the balance required between open source and closed source development. From our standpoint, open source is very important for transparency, for community to build on top of each other's work, for standing on the shoulders of each other rather than stepping on their toes. But I also do understand that many enterprises might be more comfortable with proprietary solutions that have better guarantees on security, on reliability, on servicing support, and so on. So it's not an either or for me. So if you look at some of the other com successful companies like Databricks, like Spark is open source, but they do have a proprietary solution. AnyScale has Ray fully open source, but they also have a proprietary solution. From our standpoint, we want to make sure that people who are interested in this capability are able to run it in the open source, but we will also provide uh, service support and offering on the cloud for a proprietary version and also possibly for on-prem deployment on their infrastructure with additional security guarantees and stuff like that. So we are a startup, so we are exploring all these options for our marketing and go-to-market approaches, but we are firmly committed to open source development and making the capabilities available in the open source, building on top of the open source giants like Hugging Face, PyTorch, MLflow, and so on. And for RAG in particular, we do also support closed model APIs as backend, so you can call OpenAI, Claude, uh, Gemini, that sort of thing. It ultimately boils down to what the customer wants. Many customers are increasingly comfortable with closed model APIs. OpenAI has been very successful at this. And so we want to meet the customer where they are. The customization workflow can be with an open source system, but the model itself can be closed source too. So at the end of the day, we leave it to the customer to figure out what is optimal for their constraints. And as enterprises start exploring agentic AI at a scale, what advice do you have for teams trying to balance experimentation speed, reliability, control, and of course, we can talk about so many other topics, uh, compliance, a lot of industries are in regulated industry, privacy, data leak. There are so many things that they have to consider before they dip their toes. So what is your advice? Yeah, that's a great point. I think one of the perennial kind of fears that many enterprises have is that they're locked in. They don't want to be locked into a particular vendor and stuff like that because then they might end up with not having what they need met, uh, their needs won't be met or the cost might go up. So that's one of the reasons why an open ecosystem is very valuable so that you can swap vendors more easily. And rapid fire AI will help with that because you can easily swap out of open models to closed models or anything else. Our customization framework is general on that front. Uh, in terms of supporting enterprises along the whole spectrum of maturity and adoption, that is something we've been thinking about from the day one. We call this the customization spectrum. So prompt engineering, agentic workflow structure, retrieval augmented generation, context engineering put together is one part of it. It's the inference only stage. Increasingly, we've seen many people also do fine tuning, supervised fine tuning, and also post training. We're using methods such as GRPO and so on for aligning the models better for their use case. This is primarily with open models. All of those will work on the same rapid fire AI API and system. So you, there is no complexity to move from one part to another part Likewise, continued pre-training is also something we've seen some organizations adopt, especially for code completion use cases. That can also work on the same API with Rapid Fire AI. So this rapid experimentation engine we've built applies across the customization spectrum. It reduces the complexity of having separate tools for separate parts of the stack. It reduces the fear of lock-in because you could now do open AI for like one use case. You could do Llama for another use case. You could do fine-tuning for one use case. You could do 
Rag alone for another use case, all on the same stack with the same user experience and the dashboard and uh, learning curves. Arun, thank you so much for joining me and sharing these insights. It's quite clear that experimentation and control are becoming just as critical to AI success as is data and model themselves. Thank you for joining me and I look forward to chatting with you again. Thank you so much, Swapna. It was a pleasure chatting with you and uh, yeah, looking forward to uh, inquiries or questions or feedback from your audience too. And for those watching, if you are looking to build more reliable, adoptable RAG and agentic AI systems, check out Rapid Fire AI and its new open source Rapid Fire AI RAG framework. And don't forget to subscribe to TFIR, like this video, and share it with your team. Thanks for watching.